guys, oh, we got a lot to talk about, a lot of unwrapping to do. Let's just get right into it. The nitty and gritty, my brothers. Life is hard. Uh, getting up for work is hard. Having a job is hard. Keeping that job is hard. Succeeding in that job is hard. Why the fuck does being a wrestling fan have to be hard? Because right now, the shit is at a boiling point right now. I want to be able to enjoy um, the business that I personally love so much, you know? I want to be, you know, I don't want to worry about second-guessing my who the fuck my heroes are now because of, you know, how they really are in real life. I don't want to buy my favorite superstars merch because... I'm a, I'm scared of returning it in a few weeks of what's going to be after what's going to be uncovered here. What 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 what's going on in the world, guys? What's talk talk to me, man? How are we feeling? <sighs> it's, 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 I, I, I have, I'm having such a hard time. Like all of us, like we you, you heard that right? Like everybody heard that silence. That shit is thick because it's hard to even grapple with. I mean, as hard to, as it is to be a fan. It's apparently much harder to train as a woman in the wrestling business. And so what we're seeing is, and I'm glad it's happening, right? Because, like, you got to get your hands dirty to clean the business. And here we are, like, getting dirty and, and, and seeing all this shit come out about people that, like, personally, I respected, man. These are some people that, like, I believed in. I was a per like I was like yo we've talked we've had conversations like in a way like I wrestled with you know we were in the ring together so I trusted you with my life in in, in a in a very you know superficial kind of way I guess and you like like you do that shit you do that dirt it's crazy to me man Tiff how do we navigate these waters and and what do you feel about all of that all of this that's happening. It's crazy, right? Because like, like you say, like Queen of the Indies, right? Like I go to like a million indie shows. Like I'm always at independent shows and it's just heartbreaking because it's like you can't even scroll through social media without seeing like a new story coming out. And it's disgusting and it's so hard to put into words. Like I really had, like I can't, like I'm sitting here trying to like figure out all of this and, and it's just, oh God, I I, I I like the most that hit me was like Marty Skrull. Like here's no. that like I love to death. Like you know, like if if you know me, you know, like I have a whole thing called the list of husbands. And Marty Skrull was like one of the original ones when I started my list of husbands. And here it is, like. I, I have, like, a little shrine. Like, I'm not very big into memorabilia and stuff like that. So I have, like, a little shrine. You guys can't see it in the corner. And I have, like, special pieces on there. And a lot of things are things that people had bought me. And I have a whole section of Marty Skrull. I have, like, a picture of, like, when I did the meet and greet with him. I have, uh, you know, like, somebody had bought me, like, one of the, the action figures that he autographed. I have a mug. Like, I have a whole bunch of things. And then on top of that, like, I have merch. And it, it's... And I've had multiple conversations with him when I did the meet and greets. And you're like, oh, like, this guy's so humble. This guy's so nice. Like, I've sat there. Like, oh, we talked about Winston. And, like, so it's so crushing to me because it's like I don't even know how to feel. And it's like you look at these wrestlers and you're thinking, like, oh, God, like, you know, I look up to them or they're entertaining. And then your world is just, like, thrown up in the air, uh, you know, hearing these stories. And it's like, Wow. Like I, I really can't even wrap my head Have around you, you a lot of this. Ever felt uncomfortable like at a show or anything like oh, that? Uh, I mean, you know, I don't mean to intrude or make no, this no. You know, it's funny. It's it's really? hard being like a female, right? And like me, like a lot of people, though. You know, like I don't personally think I'm in the business, right? And then you have other people that like you're in the business if you do a podcast and stuff like that, right? And you know, even before I was podcasting. Even, like, with fans and stuff like that, too, you know, like, I get it, you know, like, here it is, it's it's a guy's world, right, like, in wrestling, right, most of the time when you go to these shows, it's mostly males, now, as, as it's going, we're getting more and more females, but mm -hmm. even me, like, I felt uncomfortable, like, you know, getting hit on, it's like, here I am going to a show, and I'm just trying to enjoy wrestling, something that I love, and me personally, like, I'm single, and then it's like, 
but I'm not going to these shows to like look for somebody or anything like that. Like I'm legit going to shows because I love wrestling. I want to go. I want to be inter- entertained. I want to go with my friends and enjoy it. And I've had those moments where, you know, like fans as you know, like fans just make you feel uncomfortable. I'm not going here to get picked up on and, and it's happened to me, you know, and, and, uh, like, I, I see it, too. Like, I get it. Like, I've gotten, like, DMs as well from, like, wrestlers or students and stuff like that. But me, personally, I shut it down so quick. You know, like, I always say, like, I'm not looking for anything, which I'm not. You know, I'm very content being single. Um, but it is uncomfortable that I've got those DMs from people. And it's like, like, what are you doing? Like, I, I you know, I say it all the time. Like, I could destroy people. And I don't. That's just not me. But, you know, nobody should feel uncomfortable at all. Right. Agree. So. Yeah, that's definitely, that definitely seems to be the topic of discussion this week um, with so many stories. Uh, We're going to get into some of these, these uh, headlines here. Um, First and foremost, I think uh, one of the top ones got to be Sammy Guevara and, uh, and how he's trending, man, with the whole thing with Sasha Banks. I think he said he wanted to rape her. Um, Sasha even came out and spoke on it here, guys. Uh, how do we feel about her rebuttal? Because uh, she doesn't downplay it at all. She sticks up for uh, uh, um what's right here, but um she also explains that or kind of kind of hints that maybe he might have been joking or saying it in in kind of like a joking manner. Well, I think to be fair, and you know, at least to me, it it was a joke. It was a really bad distaste. Bad, bad joke, yeah. That I think, like, a lot of people say behind the scenes or whatever, like, things like that. And, like, that's part of the problem is that we use that word in particular and, that, and those kinds of, of actions, like, in a very playful kind of banter. And then, like, they have really right. serious consequences, right? But I, I don't in any way, shape, or form believe that he was going to rape Sasha Banks. Like, that, that was never... To me, like a real threat, I was never like, "Oh shit, he's gonna go out there and do something crazy." I believe. I think I get that from her too, with with her response. Yeah, that I, that's what I saw. I, I didn't think anything of it. I mean, I thought also his response to everything had been really good. He he immediately was like, "I'm so embarrassed." He reached out to her privately first. I think that's always right. like the course of action, right? Like if you fuck up. Listen, people fuck up. Like right? people say crazy shit, or, or a moment gets away from them. Fine, right? Like as bad as it was, the first thing you do is go to the offended party, and you're like, "Yo, I fucked up. My bad. Let Let's talk about this." And I thought him doing that first step before the public, because all of this other shit is all theatrics, right? Like it's all like right. publicity. I want to see face and blah, blah blah. And then he even did a video, which like. I didn't even think was necessary, really. And he did it, and I thought that was pretty convincing. So I think that, you know, give him, give him some time, you know, take care of yourself, kind of get your mind right. Just like we would say with other things, right? When someone goes through some, some sort of, like, stressful, yeah. right? We're like, yo, like, you know, get your head right. Like, you got punished. Yo, this is your time out, dog. Like, <laughs> like you know, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then whatever, right? Like, I... Yeah. Am I wrong? Yeah. No, it's true. Sensitivity training will give him that pop pop for sure. And that's what they're doing, right? They're sending him to training with suspended um without pay and shit, right? That's right. what Cody said. Yeah. It's All right. Like uh mixed thing with it because this was years ago, right? This was like four years ago. But you know, again, I guess maybe because like we all podcast and stuff like that, so you gotta look at it differently, right? You come on you come on the air, you, you know you're on a platform. And everything and anything gets twisted and, you know, it's out there. You're putting yourself out there on social media, on YouTube, where, wherever it is that you stream. So you should know better, you know? Like, I get it. This is four years ago. He was younger, you know? Like, you know what you're doing. And again, like, he's still young. And he had to put something out and on, like, a PR side. Like, when you're thinking about, like, AEW, he had to have some sort of sensitivity training. It's kind of like, again, like, I feel kind of mixed about it because it was, like, years ago and it kind of sucks because it kind of, 
you know, swarmed up years later and look what happened to him. Yeah, right? Like now yeah. you're not wrestling. Now you're like in the, the best spot that you can be in, in the inner circle, right? You're under like Jericho and everything. And like, you're getting time on TV and like, look, look, look what you did for your mouth. So yeah. 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 Uh, man, you can never you never be too careful out there, man. And and one person that definitely knows that is Joey Ryan. Because <laughs> he's had himself a week. <laughs> Guys, yeah, how man. the hell did we not see this coming? Huh? Because these scumbags, like, they paint themselves like, like the ally, right? Like the, hey, I'm doing this sleazy shit, wink, wink. But, like, you know, I'm really a, a good guy. Like, kind of like how Deadpool breaks the fourth wall. You're kind of breaking the fourth wall and being a sleazebag. You're thinking that, like... Right. By being a sleaze ball, you're not a sleaze ball. Well, you're fucking sleaze ball, apparently. And uh, <laughs> well, well, I think a part of it was was he had like Candace, right, for all those years, and everyone was like, "Well, all right, he's a dick, but Candace is so sweet, and if she likes him and trusts him, then he can't be that much of a dick." Right. I, I mean, I, everybody thought. Well, I mean, you can't just base things off gimmicks either, man. Yeah. But like, he did. It definitely didn't help. Did Candace? I mean. Say- Oh yeah, she, she did. Came out and she was she like, out. "Yeah." But like, did she say anything damning? Like, was she like, "Oh, I saw it." Like, he's crazy. She, I think what she, she was, was trying to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was kind of shocked, and she was just like, she was feeling sorry that that um that she kind of trusted the person that would do that type of thing. But um, she never stood for it. She never tolerated some shit like that ever. So I mean, that's kind of what she was put out there. So. It's crazy though, man, because yo, it's just and and in this business, everybody kind of knows each other, right? So like, it, it's a, it's it's at the end of the day, it's a small world, yep. you know. It, you're only as good as, as your word, and and your 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 reputation is gonna follow you, man. You gotta if if this is the business you love so much, why not why not protect it, man? Why not be the the person you need to be so that it, you can maintain it and and manage it well. Because- and, because of the so-called like locker room etiquette, right? Like there's the etiquette. Protocol okay. So like respect the elders and like to shake everybody's hand and like rookies gotta do the grunt work and set up the but, ring. And but is it like that? Room. Is it? Oh, okay. No, yeah. I feel. I feel. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. I thought I misunderstood you, but some of this is not just like creepy rape stuff, right? Like, like. Like sexual stuff, you know what I mean? Like there's also also involved in all of this is also um like manipulation, power, control. Um Congo Kong or, or I forgot, something something like that. He um he had an issue with some damn, I forgot the dude's name, but long story short is that like the kid was like a rookie in like his fourth or fifth match. He had a um a shitty match with the guy, right? Like one or two spots where he missed. And then Congo Khan like went in the back and he was like like berating him in front of everybody, fucking like whipped out his dick and shit, like like whatever, like crazy shit like that. Damn. And it was just like hazing the rookie. And then the dude at intermission went to sell merch. And when he went to the back, dude was like, Yo, you're supposed to be selling my chokeslam. Like, what the fuck? Blah blah. So that was like a thing, and he was like, Give me the money you made at merch. Jacked him for his money at merch. Oh, wow. Then there was like a battle royal at the end of the show. Then he went to the battle royal, and when he went to the back, the dude was like, "Yo, you didn't sell my choke slam. Give me the mo- give me the money for tonight." And everybody that speak up, give me your money too. And he ended up jacking like four or five rookies' money. Oh wow, that's crazy. Because that's like rookie hazing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. That's the thing is that like you're taking something that like high schoolers do, and you're doing it to a fucking 20, 30, 40 year old. Like you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of dynamic. And when mm-hmm. you're somebody. That doesn't have any sort of experience, any sort of leg in the business whatsoever, no foot in no door, right? A Congo Khan's got a name for himself, right? At least, you know, in, in the Indies, as far as the Indies are concerned, right? Like some of these other names that are coming up. Mike Quackenbush. Oh, God. All of these are allegations. All of them. And as far as I'm, as far as I know. While there has been corroboration between parties, apparently, like multiple people have said similar things. Not, I, I, at least, nothing has been acknowledged on his part, and and that all we know is what they those girls said. But they also closed the school down too. 
They closed the school. They closed the company. Um, the video game, like, are no. I hope, are I hope all them students got their cash back, man. Or they getting refunded or some shit or they compensated. No money from that, dog. They, that's it. That's, that's yeah. fucked up. Fucked so, up. That that one is- at least there's like a bunch of like promotions that I saw like on Twitter that they're like, okay, like if you, you know, open arms to like other schools that there won't be anything like that. Like you can come, like I saw Matt Tremont even put a post or, yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know, he, that he was like, oh, you know, like I, I just had him on the podcast too. And it was just, a yeah, good I did see that. Oh, he's, he's great. Like, and he was telling a story about how. You know, he's got like 30 students and how one of the students is autistic and like the the autistic kid got denied like by three schools because he's autistic. And Metremont was like, you know, whatever. He's like, I don't care. He's like, yeah, okay. So it takes a little bit longer to teach him. He was like, but here's like a dream that a kid wants. And like, that's what you want. In, in a promotion and a school. So, but even for that to him, put that out there, like, oh, come to my school. Like, you know, there's no drama. There's no this, you know, everybody's positive, you know, and so be it. So at least with all the negative that we're getting, that there is some positive, you know, trying to come out from all this. No doubt. No doubt. Um, one scary, one scary thing I want to point out here. And it's, it's, it's kind of scary. Um, have y'all noticed that um, out of everything we've heard this whole week, um, not one person has defended themselves either? Like, that's just scary to me that they know they fucked up and yeah. they can't even say a word. Like, they can't say shit because they know. Like, like I fuck, think yo. Legal counsel yeah. prevents them from you saying. Know. Yeah. And, like, and- and there have been a couple yeah. that have come out saying that, like they're they're legal legally they can't say anything. Like Jordan Devlin has been accused of of outright assault of a young lady, oh. and uh, oh, he like came out, really body and shit. He, he he came out and said he he's waiting for his legal counsel to go through the normal course of business before he says anything. He denied all allegations, but he wasn't like coming out or anything on that. That's crazy. Okay. It's just, yeah, but they did like the one like with Marty Scarlett, he put out the statement and then it was like, every, like everybody was like outraged, right? And then the next day it was like rewritten. There was like an added paragraph. So, you know, like PR, like kind of like jumped in or whatever. And then Rick Bonner puts out the statement today, you know, pretty much, you know, like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like for some reason, I feel like this is going to be sweep under the rug for something like that. That Rick Bonner is going to keep them. You well, know? I mean, oh. we're still waiting on the Jay Lethal investigation, right? Yeah. Oh, like it's my been God. Three or four years. I haven't heard anything this. about that. So, so your head booker and main star, I doubt he's getting anything happening to him. Now, I'm wondering if even like some of the promotions, too, like the ones that close, like bar wrestling and, and um, what? Like, are they going to be like shut down for a while and then reopened under another name, under new management? Like, is that going to happen? Like, these are things that I've been thinking about. I mean, like I know Progress came out. They've uh, they sweeped uh, the old management out. I think John John Briley's the only one left of the original ownership, and he has like uh, I want to say it's Vicky Haskins, uh, OJMO, and I'm missing someone else uh, coming in uh, to take care of uh, managing the company, kind of being the face of the company. Even even then. Uh, like OJMO ha- helped out Darren uh, or Daryl Allen, who a lot of people were mistaking for Darby Allen, completely different wrestler. Um, <laughs> and no <laughs> relation. Also, heard was a name, or is that because of that? It was because of that, like oh, I guess because wow. their names sound alike, uh, which yeah. is a real crappy way to get mixed up in it. Um, as he helped out it through his WhatsApp chats. He was kind of out of himself because he was using homophobic terms. So it's like, so the guy you're gonna come in, uh, who's gonna come in to clear up management, is already kind of had a strike against him. What are you gonna do then? Like I'm, the British scene, y'all know how much I loved the British scene when it comes to ICW, uh, Progress, Rise. It, it, to to see all these, uh, you know. People I was a fan of just just come out and just all this crap come against them. It's disheartening. Give it to him, Joe. Oh, Give it to him. Oh. Give it to him, old school. You know you want to. 
Progress, you know, the, the title uh, the title picture now looks like a sex offenders list, right? Like, it's, it's sad. Jesus. Uh, so, DJ High just got outed on, on Twitter now. But is that like... A, right like, now? Yeah. Shit. It just came out. DJ High from CZW. I can't. Uh, like, uh, man, like... Oh. 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 Man. Yo, like, is it really that hard, like, to not be a fucking creep? Like, is it really... Is it really? Because I don't, I don't know, man. And here's another thing. I, and I say this to everybody, male, female, gay, straight, whatever. However, if we are at a show and there is any uncomfortability, somebody is making you feel uncomfortable, you come and chill with us. Do not fucking continue doing whatever. You don't even got to say shit to us. You don't got to know us. Just come up to us be like, yo, I'm so-and-so. Do you mind if I hang out? And we'll hang out. We don't even got to talk about it. That's why, like... I- I think also, like, again, like, as being a female and stuff like that. Look, listen, I'm not just saying that it's on the female side because guys get it, too, from women as well. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it's just females. But me as a female, I've had that. Like, even, like, I've gone to um, uh, the bars where you have the watch parties. Like, you guys throw watch parties all the time. So uh, I've had that where I've gone to a watch party before. You know, and this is why I would say, like, go, you know, I, I've gone to shows and stuff like that by myself, you know, and but most of the times that I know, like, I'm I'm good because it's either I know some of the wrestlers or I know the promoter or something. So I know, God forbid anything, I can go to, like, one of them or whatever if I'm alone, you know. But I've had that at, you know, watch party, like, you know, like, real quick at... Uh, I went to go to the bathroom. And it was funny because, like, earlier I was wearing a shirt um, and it was kind of like sleeve shirt. So it's like you see like part of like, you know, my shoulder blade. Um, and it was like a little like I guess it was like a little short and it was showing I have a, you know, a lower back tattoo. And I guess the lower back tattoo was showing and then it was showing the tattoo on my shoulder. So when I got up, I went to the bathroom and um, was when I was waiting to go to the bathroom, some guy was like talking to me. He's like, oh, nice tattoo. And I was like, oh, thank you or whatever like that. So I walked away or whatever after I used the bathroom and this dude was creeping like legit like I was with him I literally was sitting at one point between two wrestlers because I felt that uncomfortable because the, there's wrestlers that also show up at some of these watch parties and I felt so uncomfortable they were protecting me they were like what the hell is with this guy he just kept standing staring at me would walk to another side stare at me walk back like it was creepy then he messaged me on freaking messenger found me on freaking messenger messaged me and asked me if i was still at the bar i didn't Jesus. answer that. you know it was creepy so anyway another like days later or whatever he writes me again he's like hi i'm so and so he was like oh i i complimented your tattoo and you know so i was like okay you know and he was like yeah the one by your ass like what is wrong with people oh. like you know like <laughs> So these are the things that I what I talk about that it's like it's uncomfortable. Like if you're going to go somewhere, you know, have, you know, be with a bunch of people. So like, again, like I said, I was sitting between two wrestlers because I felt very freaking uncomfortable. I'm like, dude, like and they saw it and look what happened. And he's like in my DM, like like you said, but there's so many creepy people out there. And again, me being a female mm-hmm. is one thing, but I'm sure guys get it, too. I hear stories from my guy friends with things that happen to them. So it's just nuts. Uh, Keith Lee actually came out and spoke about about it this week too. Something about a uh, case that happened with him. Uh, he doesn't no longer drink because of it too. Uh, guys get it too, man. It's it's not just one way, man. It's out there and it's it's scary. It's a scary world. Is there amongst anybody, other things, is there anybody else that really like caught you off guard or that you were like, damn, like damn, this person, yo, this guy or girl. This what person. about Brock Lesnar? The accusation with Brock Lesnar by Terry. Holy Rundle. shit! Oh yeah. Terry Runnels well, that, said that. That's not uh, old. Showed them the penis. But um, that was, like, when was that? That was when you stuck out, motherfucker. No, that was, like, back in, like, 2002. <laughs> yeah. That was 04. Well, yeah, she started compl- making complaints or talking about it in 04, and they dismissed it. And uh, now they resurfaced. Seems like right. the right time. Yeah, man. Nice. Like, crazy shit like that. And then that's, like... That's because of that mentality, right? The same mentality that had people shitting in Jerry Lawler's crown. You know what I'm saying? Like that same locker room. <laughs> so mm-hmm. shit like that. How many people shook Randy Orton's hand? 
Exactly. Oh, oh, oh wow. <laughs> like that. that's a tip, right? And it's all the same shit, right? Like that kind of mentality where it's like that voice called la la la. Like, I don't know, man. Again, anybody that is ever at a show that feels uncomfortable, bro, find Tiff, because Tiff goes to all the fucking indie shows. Your no shows doubt, no doubt. <laughs> find us. Yo, we'll chill. We'll <laughs> there out, yo. chill with. Buy, buy, us they... a, buy us a drink. Buy us so a drink. <laughs> <laughs> we do a shot. I love you know it's funny. Like the picture that we all took at uh, I love Colin from Synergy. I Shout love out to Colin, that. man. Much love to Synergy. Yeah. But that picture that we took, like the whole group of us that were standing by yeah. the bar. Like I have that. Like I have a picture. It's a family. Like, it's a family. It's a beautiful thing. You can really bond over wrestling and you can meet yeah. so many friends and it's a wonderful thing. And as long as like you're not a creep. <laughs> I'll talk to you. Just don't yeah, let's try, not do, let's try not being one of those. <laughs> I missed everything that's going on and all these news, ladies and gentlemen. Motherfuckers is still not washing their hands. <laughs> or wearing a mask. Wash or wearing a mask. <laughs> or wash your ass. <laughs> wash because, your ass. because, god damn. <laughs> Listen, god damn. I told you with a state shirt, right? I told you guys this story before. Do not come up to me with state shirts. That shit drives me crazy. Well, buy a five dollars shirt at Old Navy, okay? Like God. <laughs> oh man. Uh, there's a few. There's a few wrestling personalities that's uh that's been announced that has caught the COVID amongst many positive results after testing too. Because WWE just came out with a fucking. What was it? Uh, a testing that gets sent mad people home. Uh, yeah, Renee Matt Young was one of them. Uh, you said Kayla Braxton got it twice in three months. <laughs> this guy said <laughs> May Young. <laughs> May Young. <laughs> yeah, bro. Jeez. Yo, that's uh, awesome. wow. But AW, but a, Renee Young has it. But AW reports that John Moxley has not reported this week because he has come in contact with somebody who also has COVID nineteen. So. I wonder who it is. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they what? not protecting their roster? That's Why are they not protecting your people? Hold That's on, we got breaking news out here, JP. Yeah. Breaking news. Yeah. On the chat, Tessa. Yeah. Stripped of the title. What did she do? She got terminated because she was like dodging, uh, you know, to defend the title. Well, AEW what? with her daddy. <laughs> You know, I was actually that. I'm wondering because Nyla Rose, right? She said that she does we don't know who she's wrestling at Fighter Fest, right? So it's just so funny because we were talking earlier on the A the Oli podcast before about who is she gonna wrestle. There's like big news that this is gonna be big. I was kind of thinking Rio's coming back, right? But now with this, like I'm wondering, okay, like again, you know, just 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 thinking like maybe maybe she did this you know and, and it might not be true maybe she did it on purpose so she would get fired so she can go get hired at AEW <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> perfect timing so I don't know but you know so many speculations uh, for her as well because like some people you hear some stories that she's difficult to work with and all this stuff so been a bit who knows? Of a in the past herself. I mean Sean Spears is looking for a tag team partner right there you go <laughs> <laughs> facts <laughs> Yeah, but guys. <laughs> or a flare versus a blatcher, though. Ooh, woo! Mm. 